Hey folks, it's Shane from Performance EV. Today, we're going to be tweaking our battery pack. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, for those of you new to this channel, this is my little space on YouTube where I do electric conversions on interesting cars. And currently I'm working on putting a Nissan Leaf motor into a Porsche 911. Now, those of you that have been following for a while will have seen what happened over the last few weeks. Basically, I've been working on an idea for a battery box, trying to, I don't know, in theory, save money, time, effort. I, I don't know what, what the theory was, but I was trying to reuse some of the Leaf battery pack and it was just not going to work. So I've scrapped that idea. I literally scrapped it. I took an angle grinder to what I built so far. Um, and now I need to go back and actually produce something properly usable. So I spoke to it briefly um, in the last video. Um, basically, I'm going to get some or all of the battery box components actually built out by someone who really knows what they're doing. Um, and therefore, I'm not going to have to worry about, you know, over engineering a particular join because I'm I don't know the you know calculations to do around the weld strength and that sort of thing. Um, so that should allow for a much more robust pack, hopefully something that's um, going to stand the test of time and be able to carry the weight of this battery pack in the car. Uh, but it does have a knock on effect on me. Um, in order to get other people to do work for you or to build something for you, you need to be able to provide them with enough information that they can do a really good job. Um, and often when things go wrong on you know commissions and that it's not necessarily down to the person who's done the work it's down to bad requirements you know bad information coming through so i need to be able to provide as accurate information as possible um, as people who follow me on instagram and twitter might have seen uh, i've been kind of brushing up on my cad skills which will help me to you know get information across as to what i'm trying to build but all of that hinges on accurate measurements and at the moment this pack is n probably 98 99 percent of the way there but there are a couple of things attached to it that i'm not going to be using in what i'm getting built and they're making it difficult for me to get really accurate numbers i can get you know i can get a measurement to within two or three millimeters but i want to get things closer to be honest when i'm building something for myself and I've got the pack here, I've got the car here, within two or three millimeters is fine. I can adapt as I go. Um, if someone's building something remotely um, that I'm then gonna take and, and use, it, you know, it has to be right first time. So I need to get these measurements right. So what does that mean for the pack? Let me show you. So here's our leaf pack all done up together. Um, and basically the, the, the battery modules that, that make up the pack um, when they're in a resting state, when they're not actually compressed, they are actually a little bit wider. Uh, and it's really when you bolt it all together w using the threaded rod that goes the whole way through the middle, it just compresses everything. And you'll see in the, the video I did a few months ago on this, um, how that happens. The challenge I've got is I added these components here, which were part of the leaf battery pack, part of the way it mounted into the base. and I'm not going to be using them, which means I just need to unbolt them. Unfortunately, unbolting them is likely to cause the batteries to try and spread out, um, which runs the risk of damaging these um, kind of joins here. So I don't know whether it would damage just the plastic or if it would end up damaging the actual battery module itself that um, the bus bars are bolted into. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to un undo all of this and take it off. Fortunately, this is the um, set. This is the the set of contacts that is all in one piece, uh, rather than the one I built up here, where I had to kind of construct it from all over the leaf pack. So I can just take this one off in one and put it back together, and that shouldn't be too hard. Um, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to take this. Um, mounting bracket so there's two of them uh, I'm going to bolt them in just to try and hold the 
the pack a little bit close together and I'm also going to leave the upper pack intact. So that should limit the amount of expanding that happens um, hopefully make it within a, a reasonable a reasonable amount and then we'll just basically undo all the bolts take these guys off and bolt it back together. Okay, so with all those connectors removed, I can now loosen the, the tension between um, along here and basically if these expand and the space between kind of these two connectors and these two grows, then I'm not as worried that it's going to do any damage. Hopefully the fact that I'm keeping the upper um, tier tight should reduce the amount of movement that's available because it's relatively thick steel on either side which should hold it in place. Um, but yeah, so now we'll go and we'll undo the either side, uh, the bolts, and I guess I'm probably just gonna be able to undo them on this side and take it off. The other ones I'll probably end up having to send the whole way through so I can then take it off, but we'll, we'll figure it out as we go along. So there we go. That's these uh, side plates off. You know they're, they're well designed. They're they're perfect for what they do within the leaf pack. But as I'm not using the leaf battery box, um, they're not really fit for my purpose. I you know potentially could make use of them, but I think they would just end up again making me need to compromise um, on some point or other, which I don't want to have to do. Um, whatever mountings I need, I will make specific for this purpose. So yeah we are good to go. So that's now a much cleaner, neater um, kind of side profile to these, which should mean that whatever I do about the battery box will just be much easier to, to get it in and then secure it. So there we go, we've got the pack um, in much better shape than it was. Uh, obviously these bolts, ultimately I'll need to uh, cut them off because there's no way I'm gonna fit it into a battery pack with big long things sticking out, but I'll save that until I'm sure that I don't need to do any more adjustment on it or attach anything else. So that's good to go. Um, I'm gonna reattach the, the piece on the front, but I won't, um, I won't bore you with the details. It's 
just the reverse of what I did to remove them. Um, so that's what, 24 screws and 48 uh, little bolts. Not fun. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the battery pack there. I'll probably do another video um, later just talking about the process I'm going through to, to try and come up with um, an actual solution. I still haven't really fully figured it out, but I'll kind of show you through my thought process and what I've been doing, um, some of the things I've been pulling up in CAD and that sort of stuff just to, to try and visualize it better. Uh, so now, well, I was gonna go and do some work on the car outside, but today, this or this morning, this happened. So I have been planning to come out and do some work on the car today, but I don't think that's gonna happen. It's a snow day, but at least the car's tucked up nice and warm. So obviously there's not much I can do on the car, but I'll take you up to date on where I am. Um, basically, once I decided that the battery box wasn't gonna go in the car, I um, knew, as I said earlier, that I'd have to do kind of additional measurements and everything. So one of the things I've been trying to get done is get the motor back in place. Um, obviously this has made a little bit more challenging because I removed all of the original mounting hardware and everything. I still have measurements and kind of markings on various pieces so I can line it up again um, and get it in place. So that's kind of what I'm doing on the car itself at the moment, but I'll take you up to date with where I am. So this is looking pretty good in terms of how level it is and in most direction, but I think it's a little bit too far pushed forward on this side. Um, I don't think I can move it the way I want it to on the little jack, so I'm gonna get the trolley jack out, uh, just try and lift up this side, pull it out a bit, drop it back down as the jack stands, and then we'll check it out again.
as you can see, that turned out a fair bit harder than it needed to be. Um, without the big mounts hanging off either side, there's not that many things for me to to put a jack stand under to hold it in position. Um, I've now actually got it hanging from a ratchet strap and a piece of uh, box steel, uh, which seems to be holding it better in place. So the next job is just to put the um, support that goes underneath the gearbox between the two uh, subframes and we'll get that in place. That has all the etchings on it and marks so I know where um, to be able to position the, the motor. Um, so once that's in place, I can then get the motor into the correct position. Uh, then we'll figure out what needs to happen with the axles. Um, but all that's going to have to wait until the snow is clear. So there we are. Um, snow definitely stopped play. I uh, didn't get to do a few things that I wanted to do this weekend, but we've managed to, to get the battery box into a good position for taking measurements. I can start going and, um, you know, really figuring out my design, refining it, and probably actually ending up having to build something out of cardboard of that just to, to start figuring out where things like mounts and that need to go. But that's all for a future video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed joining me on, on this one, um, seeing where we're getting to. Uh, if this is the type of project that you like and you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. Um, as always, comments and likes are really appreciated. I get great value out of our out of the comments section. Um, it's been really good ideas being put forward through there, um, which have really helped this project. But yeah, um, till next time, thank you for joining us and we'll see you soon.